So today we're going to look at pruning one of the most popular climbing plants that you can use to climb on a house or on a fence. We're going to look at pruning wisterias. Now it's February and that's the perfect time to be pruning them, training them. Make sure that you're giving them a good shape and encouraging flowering by pruning them to a certain point and just basically keeping good health and good plant husbandry. So welcome to the Sir Harold Hillier Gardens YouTube channel and let's get started. So all you're going to need today is a nice sharp pair of secateurs, make sure they're clean and ready to go. This is a very popular climbing plant, it's a wisteria. Here in the Sir Harold Healy Gardens we're actually doing something a little bit different with our wisterias we're training them as trees. Now this is something that has been done for a long, long time, but it's not generally a practice. Usually you'd have a wisteria growing up the front of a house, that's very common, or over a fence, or just as a traditional climber. Here we're training them on these large posts that you can see here, and basically we'll train them, bringing them in gradually, gradually, so that they form a nice trunk, a nice woody trunk and woody base and a nice framework. And then once the, they have established a good strong trunk, we'll take away the posts and leave them to grow on their own. And they'll actually form a nice weeping tree. They're really beautiful grown like this. And I really encourage people, if you've got the space, they can make a perfect small weeping, beautiful flowering tree for the garden as well. So we're just going to look at what you would do to train it to that manner. But you can also use the same techniques if you're growing it as a climber as well. So it's exactly the same. End of February into March, you could start pruning your wisterias. Generally, we prune wisterias twice a year. So it'd be once in the summer around August time and then once February, March time. Um, and this is at this time of year to encourage buds, to encourage flowers. So you can see this one here, it's a little bit of a mess. Um, there's lots of growth coming from the base. Now it's important to handle that growth at the base first. Uh, this is vigorous stuff which will just want to shoot out and will basically want to twine and climb. And we don't need that. The other reason though we need to take this away is we want to encourage a nice strong base and a nice strong trunk but also it could be a different plant coming up from the base there because a lot of wisterias are actually grafted plants, which means the plant that you want was grafted onto a plain, maybe rather boring rootstock. So you want to get rid of that rootstock because it's draining energy from the main plant. We're going to take out a lot of these lower growths here and we're not pruning back to a bud, we're basically pruning back flush with the tree. So we're going to take them off quite severe right at the base. And like I say, some of these could be from the rootstock. You can see some coming out of the ground like suckers. That could be from the rootstock. Uh, so we don't want those. Even the ones that are above the rootstock uh, are still going to interfere with the general shape of the plant. So we're going to take those off anyway. You can see they're quite long. Wisterias are incredibly vigorous climbers. Um, so they produce a lot of growth every year. So it is essential that you give them uh, a bi-yearly uh, bi prune, so twice a year, make sure you get rid of all those uh, long growths. But also it's important, especially with the upper growths, to prune them because it encourages good flowering. And a lot of people do suffer from bad flowering on wisteria, especially newly planted ones. Of course, when you're buying a wisteria for the first time, um, it's best to buy one in flower. So go along, uh, you know, April, well, May, June time to see them in flower and then choose the one that's for you. And then at least you know it does flower and it's not something inherently wrong with it. So we've done all the lower growths here. Now, because this is going to be a tree, trained like a tree, uh, we're going to take some of the slightly higher ones off too. So there's quite a chunky one there. I'm going to take that off. And I'm going to give this one a trunk up to about here. So all these lower ones are going to come off as well. And you don't have to do that the, the first year. You can, might want to decide the different height you want to have it. This one, we're going to give it of a trunk of about a few feet, and then the rest is going to be trained like a tree. So I'm going to take all these lower bits off here. Okay, so we've got 
the base ready now and then we're going to work up a bit. Now these lower portions here still aren't really going to produce any flour um, so I'm just going to what you traditionally do anyway is cut back to two or three buds so I'm just going to find some healthy buds and cut just above them. And when you are pruning, well, most things, you want to make sure that you prune to a bud. Um, any sort of partially dead bits, there's a bit that's dying there, which is no good. I could take that off. Um, I'll probably take that one off there as well. It's not going to do much. There's a lot of dead over this side. In fact, I'll probably come back later and take that bit off with a pruning saw because it's quite hard and woody and the ends are dying a little bit, so that'll need to come off, but my secretary's probably aren't up to the job. So that's okay there. Now, the rest of the um, branches that you can see on here are very long, very wispy, and they all need to come back to help encourage flowering. So you choose two or three buds. Three is a good bet because just in case one of the other buds dies, at least you then you've got two left to give you a chance of having flower. Um, if you prune to two, you're risking it a little bit that one of those is gonna be all right. So usually you'd uh, prune to three. These little bottom ones, they're just gonna be leaf buds anyway, so I'm not gonna worry how many particularly I prune back to, but three or four is fine. Crossing branches as well, you could take out anything which is crossing or making the plant messy on the interior. Basically you want to make it nice and airy inside, especially if you're training it as a tree. So we try and take any crossing branches or anything that's going to interfere uh, on the inside off. Now a long branch like that, you can see that was not pruned in the uh, summertime because it's put on two sets of uh, annual growth there. That's fine though, but that's going to probably just be a leafy um, growth, so we're just going to cut off above the bud there. This one here, you can see one, two, three there. And these long wispy ones here, the buds are quite far from each other, so three is going to make quite a long extension growth, but it doesn't matter, that's fine. We've got three there, so that's fine, I'll cut off there. Some bits have died back here and you know it's dead when it sort of just breaks and there's no green on the inside, it's just brown and, and had it so you know that that's dead there. So we'll take that back. You don't want to leave too much of an extension growth so you wouldn't want to cut it say there because that bit there would die back to that bud and the problem with that is it could take some disease with it uh, that could affect the bud and even interfere with the whole plant and cause some problems. So you want to be very flush to the buds, just above the buds. So there's hardly any what we call dieback at all. So with a wall trained climber or a fence or it's anything like that, you'll want to let some of these growths extend a little further, especially if it's a young plant and it's just establishing. You want to leave some sort of framework to climb along the fence. You wouldn't take them all back in its first few years. However, because we're training this like a tree and older plants in general, you want to keep them nice and tight to a framework. So this has actually formed quite a nice framework already. So I'm just going to prune everything back to that. Now there's a few, uh, older bits we could take out as well which aren't doing any good so I would have said that there a few stumpy bits and you can like I say use a pruning saw to tidy up some of the old growth now if you do have any seed pods it's very important to take those off as well usually what I'd advise is when the seed pods start to form uh, in the summertime late summer autumn time that's when you want to take those off they're draining energy from the plant so they could interfere with flowering in the coming season so make sure you take all the seed pods off you can grow from seed if you want to have a go usually they don't really come true from seed so it's not really worth it and it takes a long time to grow a plant you can see this branch here is actually going to cross across like that so because we want this like a nice uh, head on it a good head for flowering we don't want the flowers to sort of be going that way. So I'm going to take that off actually. So it seems quite brutal, but I'm going to take this whole branch off here because it's just going to cross anyway. Some more dead bits down here. Usually you can tell the dead quite easily, but if you're not sure, before you cut it off, make sure you take your secateurs and you just scratch the surface just lightly and have a look underneath. And if it's green, you know it's still alive. That's what we call cambium, and it's quite important to do that if you're really not sure before you prune something off. You might notice that I'm doing my cuts at a little bit of an angle, 
Now you don't necessarily have to do that, but I like to do that because it goes the way that the bud is going. So basically it looks a bit neater. There is a kind of a, a saying that water runs off easier if it's an angle, but it really makes no difference at all. I mean, for time's sake, you don't necessarily have to count the buds like I've done here. Just sort of guessing is fine. So at this stage, you can't really see what is a flowering bud and what isn't. Flowering buds are usually quite obvious later on just as they're about to flower because they, they bulk up really nice and chunky and you can see that they're going to turn into nice flowers. Wisterias are usually excellent flowers and they produce a lot of these beautiful hanging, drooping, weeping flowers in sort of shades of purples and whites and pinks. Um, it's a really beautiful variety, so do check them out at your garden centre. Um, one thing that I'm often asked though is why isn't my wisteria flowering? And one of the main reasons is it's not pruned correctly, or you do need to prune them to encourage flowering. Um, and the other is there might be something, a problem with your soil. That's, that's often a problem when you've got a, a, a wisteria that's been in the ground a while and it's never flowered. Usually it's something to do with the, the amount of nitrates in the soil and it's too much nitrogen in the soil and it stops the, the plant from flowering. So it is a good idea to feed them as well. Um, you could use generally Bloodfish and bone is a good feed to put around your plant, but any um, phosphorus rich plant food will really help to encourage flowering. So it's a good chance as well as pruning to encourage flowering, it's a good chance to look at the health of the plant and keep it healthy by cutting out the dead or the dying bits. So don't worry too much because this is a healthy vigorous climber and although I am coming across a lot of dead on it, there is still a lot of healthy bits on it too. And that can happen sometimes. This wisteria is right out in the open. So it's getting the elements more than maybe a wisteria that's up against the house. So it's gonna get hit by winds and all sorts of things that were, would damage it. So I'm not gonna to worry too much that there's a bit of dead on it. Certainly a lot of good growing points on it. Where you can be as flush against the stem as possible, but sometimes the angle can be quite difficult. But don't worry too much, just try your best to get as close as possible. It's actually quite satisfying to take some of these long growths out. And you know you're doing a lot of good for the plant and encourage flowering at the same time. And now we're gonna to have to get a ladder to head up there to the higher growths. Okay, so now we've got our ladder out and we're climbing to the top of the climber and just gonna take off these last few wispy growths that are going straight up. So we've just given this wisteria a good prune to encourage flowering. That's its winter prune as it were, so February, end of February into early March prune. That's to encourage the flowering. And then of course you want to prune again in the summertime around August. So don't forget to hit that like button and do subscribe if you want to see more content like this on how to care for your garden.